Okay. <laughs> Let's talk about some cultural news. All okay. Right. So Nordstrom <laughs> Nordstrom is being ridiculed on social media for selling a four hundred and twenty five dollar pair of Americana workwear jeans <laughs> that are stained with fake mud. Yep. So the pants, which come from the New York-based luxury denim brand, PRPS, are described on Nordstrom's website. (laughs) The fact that they have to be described is disturbing enough. Mm -hmm. As embodying rugged Americana workwear that's seen some hard-working action. (laughs) (laughs) Have you seen that there's more? It's not just one pair of jeans. There's like eight different pairs like of jeans. Like stain patterns yeah. or something? Yeah. Like one, it's got this white patch on the one leg with mud <laughs> like on the top. stains or something? Yeah. Like, it's just like, yeah, it, it's, it's unreal. And these are permanently there. These are fake yes. stains that yep. are made to look like paint or mud and yeah. stuff like that. Uh, and this is just shortly after, within the last year, these clear knee window jeans that came out. <laughs> Like it's seriously like a like a clear plastic to show your knees. It's the weirdest, weirdest looking thing. There are people out there who love knees. I'm sure. Oh my yeah. gosh, it was it's horrible. So this didn't really come to light until television host Mike Rowe, which I love. He's Mike Rowe. He is yeah, fantastic. Flagged up the pair of jeans on Facebook on Monday, igniting a social media firestorm. Rowe said, "I understand the appeal of buying broken in jeans. I mean, really, who has the time these days to wait for a pair of jeans to?" naturally fade i also understand <laughs> i think that was sarcasm if you ask yeah. me. i also understand the different the different cuts might as well get something that fits and feels comfortable but they lost me years ago with their various stages of distress the stone wash and the acid wash the rinsed clean wash and the bleached wash and they really lost me when they started tearing holes in them on purpose so most of the social media backlash pointed out the, that the quickest and most affordable way to get this look is to buy regular jeans <laughs> and, you know, wear them. <laughs> or for that muddy, greasy look, actually work a little bit. Yeah. You don't even have to work. <laughs> Fly, wait for it to rain and go roll around in the oh, mud. Oh, man. <laughs> like, it's unbelievable. Ew. Yeah, yeah, right? <laughs> do I Tell really have to do that? To do that? <laughs> yeah. the, I mean, uh, listen, the... the um, the capitalist in me, part of me says, listen, You're about there, to say if, what I want to if say. there's a market for this, there's a market for this. <laughs> if people will pay $425 for them, then that is the right price for them. What? But man, the ridiculousness. <laughs> <laughs> like, okay. It's just, uh, oh man. Well, a lot of people are actually pointing out that they will gladly sell their stained jeans oh, yeah. Yeah. for got tons half of jeans. that price. Yeah. <laughs> 200 bucks. Yeah, yeah. Bargain. Yeah, oh yeah. It's yeah. a that's discount rack. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like... <laughs> and it's sh- permanent. You know what? And you it's know what? Permanent. It should be more expensive that it is has actually been worn yeah. by this working person that you idolize so much. Oh, well, right, yeah. <laughs> it's, like, mean, it's like getting Michael Jordan's game-worn jersey. You yeah, know, like, or his, like, used underwear. Yeah, or something. something like that. Yeah. <laughs> I know, it's, you know, I, have a, I, I might start a premium market because I mm-hmm. often use the same jeans to change my car oil. Sure. You know, mow the grass and yeah. uh, and this job I was working, getting all types of grease on me. So those are multiple different states, oh, yeah. not just one. Yeah. So I might have to jack that price up to yeah. around well, six hundred. Like I said, they have multiple pairs of jeans. <laughs> they might have you covered already. Oh, and, I might uh, have to come might... some competition out yeah, there. Yeah, so. yeah. <laughs> but it's just, I mean, it, it's also um, port- trying to make yourself portray yourself as something that you're not. Oh yeah, you know? absolutely. So it's it's kind of it's just infuriating. Like, but <laughs> and but hey, if there are people that buy it, you know, the capitalist in me says, hey, and, uh, they, they, there's a place for it in the market. And and who better to broach this topic than Mike Rowe, who was the dirtiest yeah, jobs, dirty guy, jobs, yeah, who li- oh, he's some got of a the wardrobe, stuff he did. like uh, you know, <laughs> from his show. some of the jobs he's done, mm-hmm. I would throw up. Oh, I would, yeah. Just from the smell and look of like, like I think the uh, worst one was probably the deer hide factory that he went into mm-hmm. at one point in time. Like how they, yep, uh, it was just really I, bad. I, I couldn't handle any 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 of the sanitation <laughs> ones. Yeah, where like yeah. you know, but um, yeah, he just ripped them apart, and and especially his fan base and everything. You know, so speaking of work. We'll just keep on rolling with these. Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> Unicorns, Starbucks, baby. <laughs> Starbucks baristas 
are apparently really stressed out over making the new unicorn frappuccino, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> so Braden Burson a Starbucks barista in Colorado posted a video rant on Twitter about what a nightmare the pink and blue drink is to make, according to the Associated Press. So I'm going to try to play this video here. It's been a while. It's uh, We actually haven't done this yet for um, <laughs> trying out videos, but here we go. I'm going to try to bring up that video for you here. So since every, like the unicorn frappuccino came out on the internet like a few weeks ago, and it has been like the number one Frappuccino ever. So because it's been so popular online, everyone's like, oh my gosh, I need to try it when it comes out. Well, today it came out. And I have to tell you, please don't get it. I've never made so many Frappuccinos in my entire life. My hands are completely sticky. I have unicorn crap all in my hair and on my nose. I have never been so stressed out in my entire life. It has been insane. If you love us as baristas, don't order it. It's so difficult to make it right after the other. And people were coming in left and right, drive through and in the front. We don't know which type of frappuccinos go where. We just hand them out. So for the love of God and everything that is good, don't get the unicorn frappuccino. He was basically saying, please don't get it. Uh, I have unicorn crap all in my hair and on my nose. I have never been so stressed out in my entire life. Starbucks responded by saying that they plan on reaching out to Burson to, quote, talk about his experience and how to make it better. <laughs> Can I just say, th this is probably the king of hashtag first world problems. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Right. So, is, there a, is there a bigger one than that? <laughs> so uh, a Reddit forum for Starbucks baristas is full of complaints about the unicorn frappuccino, as the Washington Post had noted as well. One poster called it the frap from hell, while another asked, is there a way to turn off unicorn fraps? Someone else pointed out a photo of themselves giving a middle finger to a sign featuring the drink. And baristas have also been speaking out on Twitter, with some saying that they are glad their store has sold out or pleading with customers not to order the birthday cake flavored concoction. But this leads to the obvious question. Can these people finally get that $15 minimum wage that they've been pushing for? <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> I mean, they're working so hard. Wading through unicorn <laughs> crap, right? <laughs> it's like, you got it on oh your nose. And <laughs> if these are baristas are stressed out over this, they need to try an actual manual labor job and that unicorn frap will seem like an arts and crafts day of stress relief. I mean, and they'll actually get their pants dirty so they can wear them out yeah, in public, and then too. Yeah, they don't need the $400 <laughs> pants, you know, you're good. So I don't know if you happen to see my, my uh, the update on the, on the social media page as well as the one I, I, I shared as well. But I said... Uh, one of my fellow guests, John, if you've seen him on the podcast, uh, <laughs> his suggestion was that we should start a GoFundMe page to raise. I looked up. Uh, he didn't say what the amount was. I actually looked up the price. I apparently, are like four twenty five each or something like mm -hmm. that for these unicorn frappuccinos. That we should start up a, a GoFundMe page. And raise five hundred dollars to go into Starbucks since it stresses these these people out so bad, and order a hundred <laughs> unicorn frappuccinos. And I said, labeled, you know how they write your name on yeah, it and yeah. everything. Put hashtag Trump's first one hundred days in office. <laughs> On every single one, and then just hand them out randomly for free yeah, to everybody outside, yeah. you know, and get it all on video. Like, this yep. is all just for a, a good undercover man on the street type video. Yep. So, we we're cracking up. I know a lot of people out there. I'm sure my liberal friends were pissed off at me for posting yeah. that and everything. <laughs> How dare you? And is Trump someone that we really want to celebrate? No. To be honest with you, I don't care about Trump, but it's just <laughs> it's yeah. everything that goes into that yeah. would be classic comedy. And listen, like, <laughs> e even, even, um, the left's opposition to Trump <laughs> makes me oh, like him more than yes. I would. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> you know, without it being there. So it's, uh, you know, and th there would be the inner struggle, too, of like, oh, I don't want the uh, Trump Frappuccino, but uh, I want free stuff. <laughs> yes. You know? So there's like the, <laughs> should I or shouldn't I? Oh, man. It's just, it's great stuff. <laughs>
Anything else to say on the uh, on the unicorn frappuccino? Uh, I mean, we could talk for hours on it, but you know, we could probably wrap it up there. Um, okay, so <laughs> so I just said, just remember that the next time that you go into Starbucks, okay, <laughs> the plate, the, the yeah, the pl- yeah, when you go in there, the mud stained jeans may be fake in the mm-hmm. joint. But the pissed off attitudes of the baristas are yeah, certainly true. Very real. Yeah, very real. <laughs> so, all right. So, let's talk about only, some. Only in America could we go from Captain Winners, <laughs> yes, <laughs> and uh, to, to, to Mr. The... Brandon Starbucks yeah. barista. <laughs> yeah, having a hard time with the unicorn. <laughs> He's like going through the forest in and off the beach of Normandy into the forest yeah. of what was that? What was that forest? The, uh, when, well, Battle of the Bulge. They the did. Battle of the Bulge. Yeah, yeah. and the, that forest specifically yeah. has a name. I forget. He's watching his people that he went through training, his brothers in arms, getting their legs blown off, and this guy's like, "Guys, this unicorn crap is all in my hair. It's the worst stressed out day I've ever had in my life." <laughs> <laughs> My word. <Yeah. laughs> don't order it. <laughs> Please, God, don't order it. 